just wanted to make sure that I wasn't disturbing the family while they slept. <laughs> I can turn on my uh, my webcam too. <laughs> Not as easy to see. Do something like that for now. <laughs> this is why I wear hats. It's because when I shower at night rather than in the morning, my hair's like whoa. Okay, so <clears throat> the thing that I do to be able to get it to be so smooth is I can I just control the topology. Okay, so one of the things I really really like to do is I like to keep the topology as low as possible. If I if I go over here to my hair, you see like, I don't have a ton of edge loops. This is this is all it is. I just have the dynamic preview turned on so that I get the nice smooth look. <coughs> it's the same thing with the with the character's body. This one has subdivisions, the same principle. Really low topology. Boost it up. It keeps it nice and smooth. So this way, if I need to do some big changes here. I can come in, I can make my changes, step back up, and I'm good to go. <laughs> I obviously don't want to do that. But, it was funny. Let's see. some books. <laughs> it's funny because the place where we're living has a very heavy, heavy Asian population, especially Chinese. Um, but I assumed that in going to the library I'd be able to find more books that were actually helpful. <laughs> In this uh, challenge dealing with the shogunate and the move some of these things so I can have some space on my desk. Um, got this one. I'm gonna, check, gonna look through some of these books. I haven't gotten a chance to yet. <laughs> So some of the things I'm trying to look for <coughs> are just different, uh, different pieces that help me make sense of the costuming. <coughs> there are a lot of things. This is a really cool book, by the way. It's cool because it has these semi-transparent pages. Where you can go through, you can see the different layers of the samurai's armor. I kind of wish it would go through and do the same for like other traditional outfits. 
because it would be helpful in modeling. <laughs> the Mongol invasion. <coughs> <coughs> helpful. Gotta use the phone. I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit of a picture here. This teeny tiny little picture. But it's kind of cool. <coughs> so the idea I'm trying to explore right now That's cool too. Yeah, I'm totally live. It's so funny, there aren't very many pictures of or illustrations of women in here and their you know, costuming and things like that, their clothing. <coughs> but there's one in the front. <laughs> Leading. Uh, not gonna worry about that one. Got that one from the kids section, <laughs> which could actually be really helpful. something like that. <coughs> it might not be this, the exact same thing, but I totally want to use these ideas. And maybe what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I could even take these, scan them into the computer, turn them into alphas so that I can apply them as you know, whatever I want to. Really. Make 3D geometry out of them and, and apply them to uh, little ornamentation and whatnot. Let me check in with you guys, see what's going on. Lost internet connection, that's such a terrible thing to have happen. <laughs> Yeah, the last few days at work, I've been kind of, oh, that's pretty. It says a decorative knot, but it doesn't even look real. It looks like it's like a print on paper. <laughs> this is a pretty cool book. <coughs> during lunch I've been going through and trying to utilize the time that I'm away from my desk sitting down and I had my sketchbook with me and I've been exploring different ideas. <clears throat> Some of these ideas are similar to like what I've got on the screen right now. Um, This book is so cool. 
not as helpful as I was hoping, but it's still so cool. A lot of buildings. Okay, so the idea, the the character, this character that I'm working on, is supposed to be my interpretation, my re-envisioning the Japanese sun goddess Amaterasu. Or, you know, not sure how that's pronounced. But it's uh, something like that. <coughs> so text heavy, where are all the pictures? Anyway, let me show you, I guess, real quick. I'm gonna leaf through this real quick. I didn't actually look through it, I just looked it up and then took it with me. <laughs> Everybody in uh, old Japanese culture really liked to draw men because men and geishas kind of like today. <laughs> Everybody draws the big strong men. And uh, yeah, anyway, funny. <coughs> funny, 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 funny. How do I organize references to create my character? Um, like my folder structure? <laughs> um, a lot of what I try to do to organize my references, I try to make sure that I just have <laughs> um, make sure that I just have the reference that I need. Um, I need to get more into naming my my reference. I mean, I don't have a ton of stuff gathered, <coughs> but I have reference in all sorts of different places. So I'll have it in um, I'll have it on my computer in folders, um, which makes it helpful for in case. Sorry, computer's all dusty. <laughs> Good shot of my elbow. Um, so that's helpful in case um, in case I don't have internet, but I still need to work on something. Um, one of the things that I like to do as well is I love Pinterest. So I use that pretty heavily. Times though, one of the things that I notice is that I can't always find what I want or what I need on the reference that I have, and so oftentimes I just find it more helpful. To turn off the sneaking thing here. Um, I find it helpful to just look up what I need in the moment, which is funny, but you know, whatever. Insert multiple edge loops. Let's do that. And now we can turn on 
symmetry B. No way, it's totally symmetrical. <laughs> Um, I've, I've worked on a couple of things with, with Zach. Uh, I'm hoping someday to be able to work uh, more closely with Zach. He's been a fantastic mentor for me for years now. And I've been, you know, I consider myself really fortunate. Uh, to have been able to have had that association. <coughs> um, he's very skilled, he's very kind, he's very um, he's very keen on building people, um, building morale, building knowledge, building everything, you know, just making sure that a person under his stewardship, whether that's you know, somebody that's put into his team at work, or whether that's somebody that's, you know, somebody that he's taken on as <laughs> some sort of apprentice, you know, he's, he's very good at building people. He, um, he will occasionally offer sort of like mentorship um, type opportunities. <clears throat> like, uh, and he, he often, well often, he sometimes has um, classes available I don't know when he's planning on doing that again. Uh, there's one of his classes that I'd really like to be able to take. <laughs> um, but, you know. C'est la vie. Así es, pues. That's totally fine. That's totally fine. And if you have questions, make sure that you uh, that you uh, that you ask away, because right now <laughs> you're the only one asking, so it's it's totally fine. Um, so let me see. of anatomy you use in your models and even existing models. <clears throat> uh, so the stuff that I do for Disney, uh, first off it's it's um, it's for the theme parks. Okay, for Tokyo Japan and uh, for Disneyland there. And um, it's all mostly plants and environment type work that I do there. Um, the character stuff I do on my own, um, or I have done in the past, you know, through DreamWorks or through Warner Brothers Games, uh, or through some of the other places that um, that I've worked. The uh, the Disney anatomy though is something that I was. Well, it's something that I've studied a little bit, you know, through art books like uh, The Art of Big Hero 6 or... It's looking all right-ish. Um, the Art of Big Hero 6, we got... 
and you got to know a little bit of anatomy because I mean all the stylized anatomy from from Disney films from um, or even from things like Overwatch, the Overwatch um, cinematics, the game, everything. It's all based off of. Got a car wash like close to my house, so I'm gonna go close that window. Um, but all that anatomy is based off of real world anatomy. It's just stylized and has a shape language to it. But yeah, so the anatomy is important because it helps the character to be relatable, and it also helps. Um, it also helps so that it's more predictable for the rigging to figure out where that needs to bend and deform. Um, polygroup flat. Pretty sure that's all I usually do. So right now, let's actually go in here and say polygroup. Okay, so we're getting some different colors in here, and I I still don't really know exactly what I want to do for the colors on her suit, which is fine. Actually, let's just, do, let's just use Z-Modeler for this. Let's go ahead, let's say, Inset, Polygroup Island, Inset Region. Start adjusting it out so that it's more usable. Okay, let me see. see so for a modeler to know all those different things well you know being from Brazil I think that it's um, it'd be useful for you to be able to for you to be able to have those skills so that you can get good jobs while you're living you know in Brazil um, or anywhere else you may B, if you get to the States, um, you're working here for larger studios, you get to be more narrow focused, you get to have more of an emphasis. I feel like a lot of people that I know that work in foreign countries, uh, even up in Canada, you need to know multiple disciplines. Um, so, I mean, that could, that could include things like you're mentioning, you know, the rigging, uh, and that's a really helpful one, uh, to know, um, actually, I guess you didn't say the, the rigging, but the, but so, so things that go together, you know, especially things that are, that are in sequence on the, uh, production timeline, 
So things like rendering and compositing, it's not as important for a modeler to know, um, but things like texturing and rigging are. Um, having a good artistic eye, really important because that helps that uh, you can go through and, and develop things and figure things out. Shows that you know how to how to define the aesthetic of whatever it is you're working on, that sort of thing. Um, one of the things that, you know, especially at Disney, I, I've got a, I've got some some really cool people over there. Um, one of my one of my good buddies from from Disney actually from Spain and he is phenomenally talented his name is Sergi um, Sergi Caballer really really nice guy and uh, phenomenally talented one of the things that made him so much of a powerhouse acquisition is that uh, he knows how to do some programming. He knows how to write his own tools. Um, <clears throat> I don't really know any programming. Um, I know how to use a little bit of Mel, um, occasionally a little bit of Python, but it's not something that I worry about memorizing. You know, if there's something I need to be able to do or a tool that I need, I know how to be able to look it up on Google and then incorporate the tool on um, in Maya or you know wherever else I may need to. A pretty little pink vest, oh my goodness. that so that it's lined up better, lined up more better. That's always the tricky thing is knowing where things are going to be by guessing. So it's always better to check. Let's go ahead and bring this in because that doesn't need to be up as far. Doesn't need to be as far forward as that. This is up too high. All sorts of stuff. Come on. Take it down, take this down, and take this down too, just for the sake of making sure that it's sitting a little bit more comfortably. Yeah, Sergi's one of my heroes. <laughs> oh, one of the things I wanted to go through is figure out want this collarbone to go. And right now I have it really round and I don't think that's working for what I want. I don't think that's right. So what I'm going to do I'm going to look up some collarbones. For you to be able to do your character, do you take some courses or study with some specific artists? No. <clears throat> I, was, I haven't been fortunate enough to really be able to take classes. What I did, what I, what I have done a lot, collarbone piercing, what? Nice. 
things. So one of the things that I do a lot and have done in the past a lot is um, I would work on my portfolio and then when I have, oh, that's going in the wrong direction then, um, when I have something that I feel too proud of, <laughs> when I have something that uh, I need feedback on. I would find a friend in the industry who can give me, you know, who I, who I trust to give me a good feedback. Um, it helps to have really good, you know, like like a lot of different um, studios, people at studios that you're. That you know, that you that you're connected with, that you've networked with, um, and some of, some of my best friends have come from places that I wanted to work at, not necessarily places that I have worked at. Um, so I feel like it's it's really important to be able to to reach out. You know, you can reach out through LinkedIn, Facebook. I use Facebook like that a lot. Uh, I feel like it's really helpful. Like it's a really, really, uh, it's a powerful tool. It's a powerful tool to be able to go in and say, hey, It's, and it's definitely a very um, desirable trait in an employee that they know how to ask for feedback, that they know how to ask questions. Um, I mean, they don't want to be. That's way too. <laughs> way too far out. Um, let's actually go through and save this. Um, everybody wants critical thinkers. Okay, so it's important to learn how to think for yourself. They'd rather you ask questions when you have them. So I try to I try to be very involved in that sort of way, very uh, communicative. shape. <clears throat> yeah, I would love to be able to take Dylan's class at some point, um, because he's a phenomenal artist. And I've loved his stuff for years, ever since he was in, in Nomen, um, all those many eons ago. Um, very skilled with topology, very fantastic design sensibility, and you know, just real nice guy. Um, it's always fun running into him at like the ZBrush Summit and other events like that. He 
you see this is starting to lose. Some of its sharpness. I'm just going to kind of move it just little by little. <coughs> it's one of the things I, I don't want this edge right here. Right, let's do this. Let's go. Check it from different angles to make sure that it's going smoothly. And that's always the tricky part. And that's that's one of the things that will most help your sculpting is just making sure that you're checking it from all these different angles. smooth intensity down. This is something that Zach Bedrock told me was really helpful to him. Is being able to go through and take just so it doesn't go straight to the smooth, you know, and, and ruin the forms that you might have built up. Um, it helps so that it just kind of gently softens what's there. <laughs> oh, that's kind of creepy. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. Love you too, Dad. My dad just sent me a text saying that he got to watch for a little bit. What ZBrush features do you use to have such clean topology like your current character? Um, a lot of Zmon were. Um, this character comes like well, this this the character base mesh, um, same base mesh that I used when I was working on the other character that I showed at the ZBrush Summit. Um, and so you know. This is this is one that was built by Zach, so that's why it looks so good. <laughs> no, um, but yeah, just being able to go through and control the poly groups and where the where the uh, where the edge definition happens. In fact, let's uh, let's do this. Z I need to turn on RGB, I need to pick the color. So this is something that's really helpful. You know what? 
like that. It's actually probably the right choice. Hmm. Now here's something that I want to be able to go through and choose. I'm going to... To manage topology, I might need you to clarify that question. <clears throat> um, like a lot of what's happening here, you can see where it's got different. Uh, let's do this. Different loops to be able to define different uh, areas of the face. You can see, you know, the poly groups will go through and they'll define specific areas. Back. Let me go through and save this because this will be uh, helpful to me. Um, this up on my Instagram as a poll. Oh, that is so weird how much difference that makes. I am not sure. Let's actually get rid of this. <coughs> okay. Okay, so this will be the old one.
Issues with my. Uh, here we go. Okay, so this is the new set. Correction to delete. Okay, so now I can hit that. So a lot of uh, some of the ways that I go through and I manage my topology, I guess, you know, keep it clean to be able to figure out. And so if I want a surface change, I make sure that my topology flows in the way that it is. So I, I you know, to be able to do something like this, it's just, it's just a regular eye uh, sphere. And then I take the last few uh, rows in the cap here, and I just... Uh, modify it, add in an extra edge loop to be able to keep it crisp, and then, you know, if it's smoothed out, it looks nice and nice and clean. <coughs> um, what it is. Okay, I'm going to take that, uh, that speck that we have here. I'm actually really liking that. <laughs> Let's do this. I'm going to take all these hair pieces. <laughs> There's so many of them. Uh, I wish I could. I wish I already had folders available to me, because it'd be nice. Okay, let's add them in there. So here's what I'm going to do. Take all these pieces, move them down all the way to the bottom of the list. All I'm doing is hitting, is holding shift. So I select it, hold shift, and I hit that down arrow right there. And that makes it so that it bumps it all the way down. What was the button that they used? some button I can't remember there's some button that that I remember seeing recently that somebody maybe it was flip normals I can't remember um, where they went through and they held the button and they were able to drag out They were able to drag out the subtool list so that it was longer. <laughs> so cool. Okay, 
let's uh, take those down here. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now if I wanted to, I could very easily switch back to this character. The, this is the old one, okay, so we've got our old guy, just our old character, now we've got our new eyes and our new character, and I like that, I like that a lot, okay, no, there's the new eyelashes, which fits the character much better. <coughs> It's so funny how much of a difference that makes. It's like, holy cow. Hmm. How do you prepare your character to have the same topology as she has now? Oh, okay, so... Let me actually check out the link that you sent me there. Let's see if I understand the question properly. <coughs> I'm really liking how that's looking. That's looking so much better now. Um, okay. So there are a few tools that you can use to be able to uh, to do topology. I most of the time will use Maya, um, but there are a lot of things that I like to do inside of ZBrush. Like for instance, there are these eyebrows right here. Okay, um, this is just really easy to go through and just use this topology brush. Shoot, not that topology brush. You're able to just kind of go through and draw it out, and you're able to go through and just make topology. Then you just have to be able to make it a reality. Um, so you know, this is what you're what you end up with. Okay, so that's a great way to be able to do things. Um, I'll often use this to be able to go through and develop a base for my topology. If I'm building out the character um, on my own, like, well, so for instance, let's open up the uh, koi. This is one I've got to work on too. Okay, so right now, this is all terrible, icky, yucky, gross topology, right? <laughs> There's no topology. It's all just mesh. Okay. So if I wanted to be able to go through and start to develop this, I would go through and I would start thinking about, okay, so I want a loop going around the eye, and uh, maybe we'd have it kind of coming out to the middle here. Let's have an edge coming down here. We can have one running along this ridge that I want right here. And then we can just start kind of connecting it. 
And then you think about, okay, so how many edge loops do I want going around the outside here? Um, the easy answer is, how many do you need? <laughs> um, I'm going to come in, add in a loop that goes up and over like that. Okay. This is going to be kind of a transitionary point, so I'm going to have a loop go up over here and go out over here. Okay. I'm going to have this kind of come down here like that. going to have one come straight out over like this and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep it even so this this point and this point they match up they're going to match up okay this point needs a balance point over here okay <coughs> and this is actually where I'm going to have let's do this oops um, something like that okay so I've got one two three one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, have that come out, have that go along. <coughs> Let's have a loop come down around the outside of this gill. You know, it's in, you know, yeah, this is a fish. But the principles are exactly the same. <coughs> okay. So like things like this, like this gill, I want this to be able to open up right through here. I want this to be able to open up and open away from the face, right? Or open away from the body. So as I go through and I, I prepare this topology, I'm trying to think about what the flow is, what the movement needs to be. So <coughs> I would probably go in, let's uh, get rid of that, let's have this go up and over, okay, and that'll be my last loop going between the eye and the, I almost said tusks, the whiskers, <laughs> um, but yeah, and then I would go through and figure out what is it that, that is really happening in here, it needs a lot more sculpting, but... What's cool is that since I have this little bit of topology drawn out, in fact, if I wanted to, I can come in here and just kind of complete that out a little bit just to be able to keep some of what I have. And this is obviously going to need to be much more high poly, so. You know, we'll work on that at some point. But... So cool. Okay, anyway. So what we can do is that since we have our topology kind of begun... We can just take this... I like to take my brush all the way down to one, okay, draw size of one, tap on my mesh, and that creates, let me see, let's go ahead, let's go down over here, split, uh, split unmasked, that creates this nice single-sided piece of geometry that I can go through and use to be able to build out my, my fish. <clears throat> now, once I get more sculpted here, I can go through and figure out, okay, what does the topology through here need to be? And then I can build that out, and then I can connect it together with this part. And it has a lot of cleanup that needs that needs done, I mean, like, shape-wise, form-wise, but I mean, it's, it's a good start. It's a good little start. Okay. So that's, that's kind of how I go about doing something like that. Just save it so that I don't lose it. <laughs> Sweet. 
Okay, that face makeup is just too much. <laughs> So, oh hey, look at that, four people watching. <laughs> That's so much fun. Okay. <clears throat> so, hairstyles that I'm wanting to go with, I'm still not sure. <laughs> I really kind of like the idea of this. I like that too. One of the things that I like about this, and maybe what I'll do is I'll duplicate it because I do want to get rid of that top part. Um, so let's go to geometry, delete hidden. Okay. Because I kind of like the idea of having, you know, that bald section of the head. Uh, something that I want to make sure of. <laughs> hey, Scarlett. Dad, are we going to a surprise? Yeah, we'll go to a surprise in a little bit. What? Oh, your heartbeat? Oh, you don't feel your heartbeat through your chest. You can feel your heartbeat. Turn your head up a little bit. Right. Hold on. Hold still. Right there. Or you can feel your heartbeat down here. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta kind of feel around a little bit, and you gotta stay still, stay still. This is really tricky. Um, oh, I totally should have brought up my bag. <clears throat> if I turn this off, am I still visible? Yeah, it looks like. Not as visible, though. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. We'll see. Does it highlight my features? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let me see. So what can I do? Yeah, right now, let me jump over and see because I have saved some uh, gotta save my collarbone reference because I found some good ones contouring tips <laughs> So some of what I'm going to be looking at real quick are some of the robe ideas that I've seen. Oh, and that was the other thing. Let me see. I got to I got to jump over on Art Station real quick. <clears throat> um, I've seen some pretty cool. Pretty cool pieces associated with the um, the 
with the concept art challenge. Uh, I thought that that was the person. Okay, wrong person. Submissions. There was. It's one of those fun features. If you ever check out ArtStation, the challenges, you can sort things by popularity. I'm actually going to go in. Let's see uh, my profile. I'll be right back to the to Z brush in a moment. Nada que ver. I was so sure that I had hit post. Ah, I need to go and grab my work bag. Hey, dude. Can I can go to Target. <laughs> you want to go to Target? <laughs> I need to go and grab my bag. Is it still? It's it's downstairs on that uh that shelf, yeah. right? What's We're up, going buddy? To Target. Maybe later, okay. We'll we'll have to see. But for right now, why do you want to go to Target? We want to go to Target. Why? To go to Target. We yeah, want to so go streaming, to Target. Yeah. Dad. Not, a, not a big deal. We want to. I kind of like the uh, mm -hmm. kind of like the open door policy during stream. At least yeah, you know, at least during my own stream, during Pixelogic stream, it would be different. But yeah. we go to Target, yeah. Mom. No, we're going to Target. Dad, can I see what the kind is? Look at how pretty the dresses are. And look how pretty the fish are. Yeah, the fish too. Huh? Have you seen those fish at work? Yep, when I was working no, at DreamWorks, we had those koi fish. Huh? I wish I went to work instead of koi fish. <laughs> Please, Dad. Let me see. <gasps> Good to meet you, Felipe. <laughs> I can feel koi fish. Oh, is Alejandro on here? Oh. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. No, I don't want that in the... Can you, actually, can you take this and put this in the freezer for me? Careful. Careful you don't trip on the cord. Okay. Alejandro, ¿qué cuentas? <laughs> Alejandro is a really, really good modeler, a really good sculptor, and a really nice guy. <laughs> yeah, I do like that guy a lot. Did you put it in the freezer? Did you? I don't think you did. Are you really that fast? I don't believe you. Where did you put it? Okay, let me see. So. What are you making? Can you can you maybe go downstairs? downstairs? Uh, I'm trying well, to. Come downstairs. Yeah, but I'm working on something right now, honey. Okay, so. One of the things that I need to do, I need to make this piece a lot bigger. Turn off local symmetry. It always gets me. 
the thing that local symmetry will do is it'll mess up that center line. It's really, really useful for some things and really not useful for others. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do this. We'll say solo. Solo! Okay, I want to make sure I want this robe. This top, this is going to be the, the top robe. Okay, I want it to feel simple. I want, so here's, here's the idea, okay? So the things that I want <coughs> to keep in mind for this character I want her to be, well, I mean, first off, yeah, you can, do you need help getting it set up there? <laughs> it's fun getting to be able to connect with people. see uh, some of the things that's looking really good I really like how that's looking it's so funny like the <laughs> it's always nice when you're like working on a project and you're getting it somewhere you're not quite satisfied but you're kind of satisfied and then all of a sudden you make one move and it's just like the light goes on that's that's what it was like for me uh, with these uh, with these eyes when I went through and I, and I moved them, you know. I want to try again, just a little something. Turn on my pizza box. Oops. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like everything else is turned off, right? Yeah, that's okay. Let's try this again. So here's what we're going to do. Let's step down. Okay, let's do that. Now let's move it forward some. I'm going to leave it like that. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> hey! There. 
have to unlock an emoticon for this thing. There's no thumb up emoticon. I can't believe that. Do I remember you? <laughs> Let's see if we can figure this girl out. She needs to smile. that I would do to be able to get a smile. Because smiles aren't very... I mean, you, you usually think of, like, you know, cartoon smiles where you got, like, this, like, arch right in there, right? But they're actually more just like a, like a raising of the mouth. <laughs> Let's actually do it like this. It's more of that sort of idea rather than, you know. But she's not going to smile for right now. Anyway, ideas that I wanted to keep in mind with her. how much of a delay there is between me saying that and me typing it. <laughs> okay, so the idea of what I want to do with her costume, with her, um, with her clothing, which might very much change what I have right now, which is fine. I want to make her feel, I mean, so she's deity, <clears throat> um, but I don't feel like that has to mean that her clothing is elegant and fancy and overstated. Um, 
I think what I want to do is make her clothing feel comfortable. I want to stay away from the crouching tiger, hidden dragon sort of thing, but you know what? Let's let's do this. I'm gonna start knocking off some pieces. Let's get rid of this and this. Let's get rid of this for now. Okay, let's get this. to take these pieces <clears throat> okay let's go to geometry delete hidden and then let's go back up let's bring that whole girl back there let's take these and kind of give it some color so we can tell a difference. And formation that's in fleet, just so that she's covered. Because <coughs> you know, gotta keep it PG. Um, nice that I still have my subdivision levels so I can easily go back and forth between <laughs> between whatever really um, so how can I do this um, let me see Yeah, I having <coughs> having time for personal projects is hard. I, I mean, I started early this morning, um, trying to get better at getting going earlier in the morning. Uh, lately, it's been a lot harder for me to actually wake up in the morning uh, to be able to get to work. I always get up and I'm always out the door by seven thirty, but it's uh. Been interesting. Let me see. So I'm gonna come over here. Let's say. Um, actually, let's go over here. And I'm going to do a quick search. So I just looked up monks, Japanese monks. Those are cool. Okay, I'm going to pull a couple of images. Um, and I'm going to bring them over into my spotlight inside of ZBrush. Um, this is a very helpful 
tool. Mummified Japanese monks. Holy crap, how old is that dude? Mummified through enlightened punishment. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read this to you, it's kind of interesting. Um, more than two dozen mummified Japanese monks who were followers of an ancient sect of Buddhism known as... Oh, I'm not even going to be able to pronounce that. <laughs> Shugenda. I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy this over. Let's, let's put this in the street. Okay, hopefully you guys can can access that just fine. Um, but yeah, so if you wanted to be able to to look at what it is that I'm reading, it's kind of kind of interesting. Um, and I found this by searching for Japanese monks. Uh, the the thing I like about poisonous tea, man. Okay. Wow. Uh, more than two dozen mummified Japanese monks who were followers of an ancient sect of Buddhism uh, discovered in northern Japan. Their beliefs were extreme and included the strict denial of any earthly comforts. The process of self-inflicted torture, according to them, was the only path to enlightenment. That's bizarre, okay? The practice is more than a thousand years old. Wow. So bizarre. Okay, let's uh, let's keep looking, because so one of the things, and actually this is really quite useful from the standpoint of being able to see oh that's the same dude but his head like the top of his skull looks darker unless they're just serendipitously in the exact same position uh, but the thing that's useful about this is being able to see the clothing and how that how that works I like the idea of having something more related to monks in the clothing because one, it gets that idea of, of that she's more of a humble sort of deity, um, but I also like the idea of her feeling like she's... Um, Let's start, let's start building this out some. Um, okay, save image. Uh, reference. Uh, I'm just going to save it right there. Because why not? Okay, now let's bring him into ZBrush. This is going to get really different really quick here in a minute. Let's go to texture, import. Oh, let's hit reference here. There we go. Okay, so now that these are in here, you can tile proportion it. Okay, so look at how cool these are. Okay, I really like this. It's got like this uh, vest idea over like these very loose sort of sleeves. Okay, so maybe what I'll do is make it a little bit bigger. Um, I don't need the hat. It's not at the moment. So let's do this. First thing we need to do, brush, samples, turn off spotlight projection. And in fact, if we wanted to, we could come over here. And we could say, uh, opacity, turn those up. Okay. Let's do this. 
This is gonna be cool, guys. I am excited. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I wonder. I'm, I'm like bouncing around too much now. Stroke, curve, box start and end. Let's make this a lot bigger. Let's take that focal shift. What you doing, baby girl? Okay, let's put on. You know what? Maybe we should go to the temple today. You want to go to the temple today? No. You don't want to go to the temple today? No. <laughs> he wants it. There's a place at the, at the at church. Mm, surprise at church. What do you mean? Maybe it's a good can you do today again? How about you do a skin color instead? A skin color instead, huh? Uh oh. Yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. ZBrush is frozen. <laughs> uh oh. What's happening? No! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! It's <laughs> crashing! It's crashing! Ah! <laughs> I can't believe it's crashing. So look, look over here. Okay, do you see the little spinning blue wheel right there? That means that it's not working. <laughs> my eyes. <laughs> oh, man. Hey guys, you mean this is a No, oh, don't don't play with my tape, okay? Okay, so what's nice is that it'll have the auto save. There's pink paint on your... So let's get this started back up. There's pink on it. There's pink. There's pink on it. Yeah, but don't touch it. How did you get pink on it? I think it's from some silicone that I was using to be able to make a toy. I used it. Ooh, that's bad. Oh, we don't touch that. What is it? It's a... Uh... It's a kit to be able to... Oh, I think I might have lost that piece. Did I lose that piece? Please say I didn't lose that piece. Yes, you did. I probably you did, didn't did. I? <laughs> My goodness, it sure is going slow right now. You did. Well, I found it. I found it. I did. I lost my piece. Well, I found my thing that I needed from yesterday. Okay. Let's go to the tribe. Shh. We have a way. Too crazy. Oh, I need to lock, start locking. I need to turn this back on. I need to adjust Maybe my curve again. Maybe we can go to the town spot. I'd like that. We can go to the temple. That's something, that's something that mommy and daddy really miss, is being able to take you guys to the temple. And I haven't seen the temple for a while. Well, maybe a long time ago. That's way too small. That's probably about right. Maybe I saw the temple a long time ago when it was small. When it was small? No, you haven't seen this temple when it was small. Because it's, it's, it's older than mommy and daddy. Can you go to the temple? 
cake snack there? Oh, you know what? Okay, I need to do this. Here's one of the other things that you can do. Hey, Scarlet. Shh, that's too many, okay? That's, that's too loud. Modifiers. Take this down to eight. And the reason I do that is because it makes it so it's easier to manipulate. Less points. The other thing I can do is I can kind of beef it up a little. Not that much. How do you know about sucking your thumb? How do I know about sucking my thumb? No, my thumb. Oh, your thumb. I don't know. I don't know why how I suck my thumb. Maybe it's because of my body. Maybe he <laughs> wants to suck my thumb forever. Yeah, but you want to stop sucking your thumb, huh? Yeah, but I want my body to stop doing that. Okay, so that's actually really, really cool. I like that. Like a lot. Let's come up here. I can't walk. I'm going to say delete hidden. Okay, so that way I've got a version without and a version with. I think I'm liking that version with. Oh, I'll have to come back to it. We'll see. I go walk on it. Okay. <coughs> Let's come down here. Let's start. Hey, Scarlet, honey. being a little bit loud. Can you please go to the temple? Not yet. Okay. Daddy's working on something. Okay. So when Daddy's done, here, let's try this. Sometimes transpose line seems to work. Well, maybe I can go downstairs. You can do that. Let's change the color to something lighter. Let's do something like... Let's get my uh, mask glass a little more. Actually, let's, let's do something more like that. And then, let's check on you guys. I haven't been to you guys since it. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the, uh, the autosave didn't save everything perfectly, but, you know, it, it at least got me close enough, you know. change my intensity and let's move it down. It's much more flexible. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do something a little bit different. Let's, uh, We probably ought to smooth. <clears throat> probably ought to actually just rebuild this. So what I'll do is go ahead and say 
delete header. I'm trying to get like this nice deep glare on the screen behind me from uh, from the blinds from the window, <laughs> which is fun. Uh, not really. So, so since this is not working for me, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to use my topology brush, and I'm going to start to draw out these sorts of lines. The kids are watching downstairs, but they're watching someone. Let's do something like that, just for the sake of making sure that there's an extra little division there. <coughs> okay, the other intermediate loops, I'm going to want to go through and add using Z-Modeler. Um, and here's the other thing that I want to go ahead and do. Let's add in That's good, that's good, okay. And that's enough for me to be able to go ahead and start the pants. So I'll just go ahead and tap on that. Let's actually do this. Geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. So now we just got rid of the old uh, form-fitting pants. Okay, so now we're stuck with this. Delete hidden. Okay, purely for the sake of making sure that I am not suffering from bad symmetry. I'm just going to go ahead and take this, make sure that I, near, that I uh, mask that part out. I'm just going to move this just a little bit. Oh, and I think I've got a mirror and a mirror and weld. Okay, so now I've got the base for my pants. Okay, let's make sure symmetry is on. Z modeler. And I'm going to bridge these, bridge these edges, one, two, buckle my shoe, three, four, shut the door, five, six, pick up sticks. Oh, we got to go through, we got to add in our, um, our images to spotlight again. So that's the same thing, uniform scale. Oops. Scale up. Let's get this scale up. Bring this one up here since it's on top. Bring this one down here. Okay. 
And actually, there are there's a lot less about this one that I like. I'm just actually going to gonna get rid of that one. Let's scale this one up. Let's get my opacity up. Get opacity up. Okay. And we'll bring this whole guy on. Okay, so let's make this black. Usually it'll let me go through and paint it out. If I use black and paint out on the image, uh, it'll hide part of the image. But I guess we'll just we'll just leave it the way it is. Okay, brush, samples, spotlight projection. Okay, let's go back here. Sweet save. Okay, and then the other thing we can do. And we don't really need to save the spotlight. We don't have like a ton of images that we're using right now. So we'll just worry about this for right now. Okay. So I don't want to do these pants. I want to figure out my own pants. I'll probably do some sort of wraps for her legs. If you want to follow the uh, the art station challenge, let me go ahead and put that up. Um, it's really pretty neat. So you can come through and you can see you can see the different submissions. And oh, there's some really cool things coming through right now. Um, you can see all the different submissions in there. It's cool too because you can go ahead and you can like check it out by by you know what's latest, what's popular, what's you know the people, the the ones that you're following, and ones that are done. <laughs> there's one that's marked as done, but it's uh there's nothing in it. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> Um, yeah, there's some really, really cool ones in there, ones that are just, just barely coming in now. There's one from Brazil, from Enrique Tome. Um, that's looking really cool. Anyway, you guys will have to go check it out. Really, really neat stuff. Okay, let me see. Jump back to this. What if Hmm. Didn't realize I'd already set my thing to be that large. Okay, so code base. I'm gonna actually rename this because I want this to be best. Openings to be much larger. So, this is going to really change the whole structure of this piece of clothing. So, I want this, this hole to be long. Okay, let's come over here and fix it. these to kind of go off the side of the, the chest here.
just a pinch in the bottom back here, so let's flatten that. I'll probably add in an extra edge loop through here at some point. <laughs> um, The idea, I keep, I keep like coming back to this, but the idea is that I want, so I want her costume to feel humble. I want it to feel, um, graceful. But I want, I want the idea that, that, um, that riches and, and, um, you know, that, that fancy is a thing of human status. It's a thing that... people invented for the sake of, you know, let's just do this, um, for the sake of elevating themselves, and so, so the idea behind having simple clothing, is to just show that that their power is not in the way that they're dressed. The power is not in the way that they are, you know, the things that they have. The power is in the things that they do. So in that way, be a statement too. I need to make sure I write all this stuff down or else I'm going to lose track. Okay, I'm trying to decide if I want to do a long vest or a short one. think, let me do this actually, let's just hit delete, go back to this, and then, just going to slide these up. Let's do it even a little bit further over. Here we go. Okay. This way I can keep my special poles more on the same.
here's what I want to do. Let's go display properties. We can go double. It's just a little trick. Something that I do every once in a while to be able to work on things like this because I want to bridge these edges together. Okay. Come in here. Let's insert multiple edge loops. So I'm going to need an edge loop right there. Oh, insert single edge loop in. Okay, one right here, one right here. Then I just want to stitch two points to end point. It's like there are so many different ways to do things in this program. Let's go like this. Um, and uh, so many different ways to be able to get from point A to point B. Uh, obviously, the, <laughs> the quickest route between two points is a straight line. But so many ways to do things so if you don't know one way then you know it might be another way that you find easier or more effective uh, it's just fun store and get myself some conchas. It's this uh, Mexican sweet bread. My favorite. Concha translates literally into seashell. And it, they're these really, really cool breads that look like seashells. <laughs> oh, Crazy ass. This is where I go through and I try to figure out what's working, what isn't working. This needs to come out. Let me come up a little bit. And this needs to come out a little bit. Okay. <coughs> Why'd you do that? No, Oliver ripped the papers off the ribbon. <laughs> oh, good balancing. <laughs> Thank you. Have you seen a little balancing like this? I've never seen balancing that good before. Where did you learn how to balance stuff like that? He just do it. He just do it. <laughs>
Balance my lady. What are you talking about? When I put the hat on my head, because it balances. Hmm. Going to bridge. Eh. Uh. Start connecting these pieces together. Eh. Uh. That's gross. <laughs> it's just going by balance. Going to why is there a fork on? So the fork, let me show you. This is part of a mess kit. Okay. And why is there a spoon on the back too? Is it a fork? There's a spoon. A and why stuff. is a spoon? There's a knife. It's a sharp knife, so you don't want to play with this, okay? Why is a And there's a spoon. And so this is something that I can go through and I can use if I if I do this. Then you can cut something. Well, I can eat my food. <laughs> it's a nice it's a nice little tool for when I go camping or when I go Go on kind tree. I used to actually uh, keep it with me at work, but I haven't for a while. Oh maybe you could take it to work. Do you want it? Well, I think it'd be helpful. What do you think? Good! Okay, bridge. Bridge. <laughs> that was too crazy, baby girl. Okay, mirror and well. I guess it's our center. Like, is that what uh, I like? Say. I'm not sure. Yeah. That's my white A white squirrel? Yeah. Yeah, he's screaming downstairs. White squirrel. Yeah. You guys watching Ice Age? Are you being a goofball? I'm not being a goofball. Are you sure? Because you sure sound like you're being a goofball. Yeah. No, we're not. I'm going to get into a white hair stash. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. Let's do this. Insert okay. here, here. Those guys. That's why I catch white squirrels. Dad. What's up, honey? I see. I saw. Um, I I saw. Um. I saw them. Um, I see lizards at school. You saw lizards at school? Yeah. Do lizards go to school? Well, I saw a little one yesterday, and then I saw them. Then I saw a big lizard by um. By um, by um, by, by um, by nature. A big one by nature, huh? Uh huh. And you didn't see them. Oh man, how did that happen? Oh man, okay, we're gonna fill that in. Why do you know where it was in the temple? Oh, I do. But, but. But, but, but you're not coming downstairs. We're late for a surprise. We're not late. Yeah. Honey, it's Saturday. Dad, yeah, can we go for a surprise now? You see what I gotta live with? It's really not very simple. Ow. Tranquila, mama. Hey. Don't do that, okay? I don't want you to hurt your neck.
funny. The colors make me think Winnie the Pooh. Ew. No, Winnie the Pooh is a bear. Why are you saying you? <laughs> you remember Winnie the Pooh? You've seen Winnie the Pooh before, haven't you? Pew. Pew. No, that's rude. But I always say pew, poop. Well, we would that a book, but I didn't say you see it. Okay, don't play daddy's water bottle. Okay. Does your computer say dun 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 dun? Does my computer do what? Does everything. Well, I did not like the pink stuff on me. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I didn't realize you had scissors. Crease, edge loop partial. Oh, why did you have scissors up here? Because I need them. Because you need them every day. Daddy needs to eat breakfast, so I'll be done in just a few minutes. That's a lot. That's not a lot. Yeah. A few is less than ten. No. Ten is a lot. What I need to do is delete lower now. And that will be a much better resolution to work with. Do I prefer to sculpt with perspective on or off? It depends on what I'm doing. If I'm wanting to try to line something up, like right now you'll see I have perspective off. But if I'm sculpting a character, especially if I'm sculpting the face, and I'll wait for the quick save, wait for the quick save. And let's uh, do a real save too. Okay, <laughs> so when I'm working on like the face, um, I'll have symmetry on. And I'll, and I'll sometimes switch between having perspective on and off. Um, the reason is, is that it looks different under different circumstances. So right now it's purely orthographic, but right now it's got the perspective on. And the difference is subtle. It depends on how big your model is in the scene. Um, this particular character is actually really quite small on the grid. Okay. But this is... I mean, this is the same scale that you'd use on most anything, so. Um, so that's kind of nice. And you like, you want to try to keep your scale consistent. So by keeping your scale consistent, um, you're able to better you know, better coordinate how things are supposed to look in the end. Okay, I need these 
needs to definitely go longer. Don't want shorts. Here's something I want to do. Let's turn off the grid. We don't need it. Let's go like this. So one of the things I'd like to use is this mask. Oh, not poly, not polygon. I want the edge functions. I want mask, edge loop partial. I'm just going to mask that out, invert it, and then let's use this transpose line. Actually, don't want it to go all the way through. Let's just take it so that it's something like that. And then same thing, we're gonna go over to this one. And that's got this top point. And keep it still. So the thing that this will do. Okay, so you see it's it's, it's got those those edge loops much closer together. Okay. Now when I hit my smooth, it's giving me a little bit of a crease there. A crease I didn't have to work for. <laughs> let's uh actually let's do this. Let's use our slide edge loop complete. This is starting to go somewhere pretty cool. Okay, we're gonna try a few things. Okay, let's uh, turn the vest back on. But here's the deal: let's make it like the pants, but darker. see that, that this man's clothing has multiple layers. So I'm counting at least the shirt, the, in, the inner tunic, and then this, uh, this outer vest shawl-like piece, which needs to come in much more Yeah, and there, there are other 
features instead of zipped in. Going back to that uh, perspective question, um, there are some features inside of ZBrush that work best when you don't have perspective active. So things like if I'm using my uh, my clipping tools, um, or if I'm using you know, the transpose line or, or the other tools, other things similar to that, um, the gizmo, I like to have perspective turned off. It's because then I feel like it allows me to better interpret what's happening with the tool. And so if I can understand what's happening with the tool, then I don't have to worry about being so far off with my sculpting. Okay, so that's that's when I'll go through and I'll toggle between having perspective on and off. Okay, so here's one best. Let's go ahead, let's do this. Let's change this and duplicate it so we can keep it. Oops, let's uh, hold control so we can get a new edge loop in there. Because I like the idea of there being a long, flowy sort of You know what I mean? So I think that by adding that sort of it to feel more feminine and I definitely want this to feel feminine yeah I mean this is definitely going to be a very very different interpretation of this goddess than <laughs> than I think has been done which is good that's what I want Of, part of me going through and streaming this is the idea of uh, making a record of my thought process and uh, which I, I feel like is invaluable you know, it's it's uh, it's important to understand kind of your your thoughts and how you evolve from one thing to another Okay, there we go. Okay, so this is a really, really handy tool. So right now I have my perspective off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and I'm going to get my slice, slice curve. I'm going to click and drag, drag that out. And you can see... I made a nice, clean slice and made a new edge loop right there. Okay, so I can go through and I can do that however I want. I can go in and I can add bends. Okay, I don't want to do that right now, but what I do want to do, I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to pull this. 
this out. Let's pull it down to like the widest point in her hips. And pull it out to cover her bone. Let's do this and rotate this up a little bit. Okay, if you have thoughts. things that you see that you feel like are off or could be better, always open to those sorts of comments. I'm liking this a whole lot better. Okay, let me turn on different hair options. I think I won't do something like that because it's too long. So it's competing with the... Of course, this needs to be longer right? still, I think. <laughs> too short. I feel like this doesn't quite have the right feeling. I do like this. I love this, but I think it almost feels too simple. Yeah, I think this is winning for me so far. Let me actually turn this one on. We'll keep it on while we develop the rest. But yeah, so let's... Uh, Let's leave her where she is for right now. And, uh, yeah, I, mean, I can't tell you how grateful I am that, uh, that you guys came by to have fun with me for a little while this morning. I'm gonna go eat breakfast now. Get up early, you hit the computer right away, and you have so much fun you forget to eat. Oh well. Okay, so, you know, next time I'm on, I don't know if I'll stream every time I work on her, but um, next time I'm on, I will probably work on getting in that base shirt, that secondary vest piece that'll just cover up that torso area. Um, Possibly the wraps for her feet. And uh, might call it good. <laughs> Batman's cape. <laughs> I will probably refrain from making her look like Batman. But I like I like your thinking. I might um, I'll probably go through and do some sort of lotus pattern, um, along the edge, might do a trim along the edge of her, her clothing, in particular this robe piece, um, that piece, or delete that piece, rather. See, we're going to call that good. Make sure you save your work always. <laughs> Constantly. Yeah, 
I like this. This is definitely going to call for some new face paint. But, you know, I'm up for that. We can totally do that. All right. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. And uh, hopefully we'll catch you around the next time I'm on. See you later. Okay.